you got to know the Weber versus Rene test. I don't know if it's pronounced Rene or Rini, but for now on, we're calling it the Rini test. The Weber and the Rini test are both high yield. The difference between sensory neural hearing loss and conductive hearing loss is also high yield. If you look in first aid, this only gets a little table in first aid, but many students report that this does show up a lot, so it's important to know. Here's a really simplified drawing of the hearing system. You have two ears. In this case, they look like little Mickey Mouse ears. Then you have a blue ear canal, some red ossicles, and a green cochlea. I've labeled that for you here by colors, just so we can keep this really simple. There are two types of ways that we conduct impulses to be able to process them through cranial nerve 8. One is through air conduction. If something is held right in front of your ear, it moves through the air into your ear and is conducted on its way towards the brain. The other is bone conduction. If something is held against the bony process of the skull, sound waves move through the bones and go directly to the cochlea. Under normal circumstances, air conduction is greater than bone conduction. This makes sense. If something is held right next to your ear, it's going to be louder and more audible than if it was held against your skull. Now, let's say that we place a tuning fork on the mastoid process. You need to know whether this is the Weber test or the Rini test. The mnemonic to remember this is that the Rini is under the pinny. So if you know that the, out, the outside of the ear is called the pinna or the pinny, Rini under the pinny. So anything under the ear, it's the Rini because your Rini is under the pinny. So what you do is you strike the tuning fork and you put it under the pinny or on the mastoid process. And then you, you ask the patient to tell you when they can hear it. They tell you that they can hear it and then you move it right outside the ear. So what you've done at first is you've tested bone conduction with Rini under the pinny and then you've moved it right outside the ear to test air conduction. Again, under normal circumstances, air conduction should be greater than bone conduction. If they have conductive hearing loss, they'll be able to hear it better when it's held against the bone when it's under the pinny on the mastoid process. But our mnemonic to remember the Rini test is Rini under the pinny. There's another test that you have to know. If you place the tuning fork, if you strike the tuning fork and place it on the top of the patient's head, this is the Weber test. The Weber test localizes ears. The Weber test tells you Weber it's the right or left ear. See what I did there? I replaced the word weather with Weber. So the Weber test tells you Weber it's the right or the left ear. When you strike a tuning fork and place it on their head during the Weber test, the sound moves to both ears. So this is for localization. Under normal circumstances, the patient should be able to hear the sound equally in both ears. But if they have sensory neural hearing loss, they're not going to hear it in the ear that has sensory neural hearing loss, which means it localizes to the good ear. In other words, if I strike a tuning fork and do the Weber test and place it on your head and you only hear it in your left ear, that means that your right ear has sensory neural hearing loss. So Rini under the pinny and Weber tells you Weber it's the right or the left. So that's a lot of information in a very short amount of time. So why don't we do an example? If a tuning fork is placed on the mastoid, and then moved outside the right and left ears. The patient says that they're able to hear the tuning fork better when it's held in the air next to both ears. The physician then strikes the tuning fork and places it on the patient's head. The patient says that they hear the tuning fork better in their right ear. What is the diagnosis? So I'm, I'm asking you what type of hearing loss is present, if at all. So let's dissect this step by step. The first thing that the physician did was strike the tuning fork, place it on the mastoid, and then move it outside both ears. He started with the mastoid. That's Rini under the pinny. So he did Rini under the pinny, and the patient said that they were able to hear the tuning fork better when it was held in the air. That's a normal response, because again, air conduction should be greater than bone conduction. So we have a normal Rini test. Then the physician strike the tuning fork and placed it on the patient's head. What test is that? Well, that's the Weber test. It told you Weber, it was the right side or the left side. When the physician did this, the patient said that they were able to hear the tuning fork better in their right ear. So the question is, which ear has sensory neural hearing loss? And that is the left, because the patient heard it better on the right side. So here, that was just a really easy example, but it goes to show you how simple these tests are if you know what the tests are testing for. In a nutshell, if I'm going to summarize all of this for you, I would say that the Rini test is Rini under the pinny. You put it on the mastoid just below the pinna of the ear and you're testing for conductive hearing loss. The Weber test is testing for sensory neural hearing loss. It tells you Weber, it's the right side or left side that has sensory neural hearing loss. 
These are very high yield and I suggest that you go through this video once or twice to get it down. It should only take you five minutes, but it will be free points on test day if you dedicate the necessary amount of time. Good luck, guys.